Yep, thanks. So sorry for the delay. Uh, now we're starting uh, the, uh, the session on Notch as a web mining platform. Uh, I'm happy you're here. And my name is Andrzej Białecki. That's probably the most difficult part of this presentation, uh, how to pronounce my name. Um, a little bit uh, about myself. Um, I started using Lucene in uh, uh, 2003. Um, at that time, uh, during the end of the dot-com era, uh, everybody was implementing a desktop search application, so I, imp I implemented my own, too. And now... It's still here. Okay, good. Uh, then I quickly hit uh, some problems with, uh, with during indexing, so I wanted to know uh, what the stuff looks like inside the index. Uh, and unfortunately, at that time, there, there were no tools uh, to do this, so I created the look, uh, the Lucene indexing toolbox. Uh, currently, I'm uh, more into uh, uh, Solar and Notch. Um, I'm a Notch and Lucene committer and a Lucene PMC member, and I'm also leading uh, Notch as a top-level project right now. So we'll talk briefly about the uh, Notch architecture, uh, a high-level overview of Notch, what it is. Uh, we'll cover uh, crawling uh, in general. What are the challenges and what are the strategies to address these challenges? And then I will cover uh, the Notch workflow, how to actually make uh, Notch uh, work, uh, how, to, how to make it uh, do what you want, want it to do. And then we'll focus on the topic of web data mining uh, with Notch as the source of data with examples of uh, systems that I helped to build. So there will be a lot of practical information as well, I hope. And uh, actually some of these systems are in production right now. And uh, then I will briefly cover the uh, Notch present status and the future of the platform. Hopefully we'll have uh, still time for questions and answers. So the project as such uh, was founded in uh, 2003 as well by Doug Cutting, the Lucene creator, and Mike Caffarella, and it quickly became an Apache project. And uh, the development was uh, diverse, to say the least. Uh, there were many ideas uh, being tried uh, in Notch uh, uh, as, a, as a framework. So for instance, uh, one of the uh, experiments uh, that was uh, con uh, conducted during that time was the first implementation of the MapReduce framework, uh, today known as Hadoop, uh, which was quickly, well, relatively quickly spun out into uh, its own uh, project. Uh, there were other areas of experimentation and development in Notch that also uh, um, uh, resulted in separate projects, such as Tika, the content parsing and detection framework. Today, there are many installations uh, of Notch uh, in production, uh, usually as uh, providing either internal search or as a vertical search engine, uh, with uh, the, uh, the volume of documents uh, somewhere between 1 million and 200 million. I know it's a very wide range, but that's, uh, that's uh, how it is. Uh, typically, it's somewhere around 10, 20 million. And one installation that I worked with uh, had one billion documents. Uh, in May, uh, Notch graduated uh, to uh, separated itself uh, from Lucene uh, because uh, prior to that it was a, a Lucene sub project and became a top level uh, Apache project. Current release, uh, which is currently uh, RC4, re release candidate 4, is 1.1. So, what sits in a search engine, you might wonder? Well, quite a few surprising things. Uh, uh, it's not easy to implement a search, uh, search platform that uh, goes out, collects the, the, the right stuff, and then presents it in a meaningful way. So on a very general level, you have the, uh, uh, you need to start somewhere, right? So you have the, uh, injector component that is responsible for uh, adding stuff to your database of uh, to your knowledge about the web in general. Then you have this uh, web graph database which uh, stores uh, page information and links both incoming links and outcoming uh, outgoing links from pages. 
Then, okay, uh, you need to schedule uh, your crawling. So you have the scheduler com component, uh, which uh, selects some of these pages for fetching, uh, either for, uh, from scratch or uh, for refetching, and then passes this information to the crawler. And the crawler component actually goes out and uh, connects the target servers and downloads the content, whatever that might be. Then you have the content repository, uh, which uh, stores the downloaded content and some other stuff that you uh, created based on this content. Once you download, downloaded your content, you want to update your knowledge about the web, right? So you keep discovering new pages, you keep discovering links between pages, so you need to keep this information somewhere. Um, in the meantime, uh, of course, you need to parse the information. Not all the web is created in plain text. After you have parsed and uh, cre uh, created all, this, all these data, data structures, if you want to offer a search uh, service, then you need to create a full text uh, search index. So there is an, an indexer component. And finally, we have the search. And uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, a bunch of happy users who foot your bill. In the meantime, uh, while you're going through these cycles, uh, you need to have good crawling frontier controls. And uh, I will explain what it means in a moment. So let's take a look at the notch features uh, at a glance. Mm. What notch offers out of the box? Well, first of all, uh, the thing about Notch is that it's highly modular. So it's, uh, the architecture of Notch is based around plugins. Uh, mostly everything in Notch is a plugin. So uh, if you want to crawl HTTP servers, which most, most commonly you want uh, to do, then you have the protocol HTTP uh, plugin that implements uh, the, the interaction, the HTTP interaction, how to actually download the page, how to handle cookies, authentication, and stuff like that. Um, the same with FTP, uh, the same with uh, other uh, types of uh, protocols. Uh, another group of plugins uh, deals with content parsing. Uh, yet another group of plugins deals with indexing or in uh, scoring, uh, how you score pages, how you uh, assign certain different importance to pages. So mostly everything is based on plugins, and it's uh, quite easy to implement your own plugins. Another component in Notch is the data repository, as I mentioned before. Um, we have the page status database and the content and parsed data database. So one, uh, the former stores uh, the web, web graph, your knowledge about the web and about the connections between pages, and the other stores the actual content and stuff that you derived from the content. Another component that uh, comes wi uh, with Notch out of the box uh, is a multi-protocol, multi-threaded, and distributed crawler. So what it means uh, is uh, that it can operate uh, either on a single box or on a uh, Hadoop cluster. Because as, as it turns out, um, uh, Notch is implemented on top of Hadoop. So most of these uh, processing steps that um, I will exp explain in a moment, uh, they are implemented as uh, Hadoop MapReduce jobs. We have full in text indexer and search frontend. Um, uh, nowadays we are moving uh, towards Solar, uh, but there is also a plain Lucene-based uh, uh, indexing and searching backend both local and distributed. And there are many, fl many integration options. You can integrate Notch uh, in many ways with your other existing infrastructure. So going back to the slide, uh, the search engine building blocks in general. Uh, in particular, uh, Notch implements uh, things uh, somewhat differently. Uh, we split the web graph database into two parts. Um, to, uh, for performance reasons, mostly. Uh, and uh, because uh, different parts of this information are updated at the different uh, schedules. So we have the CrawlDB, uh, which uh, stores the information about uh, uh, URLs. What kind of URLs we know? Uh, what do we know about them? Uh, how often they need to be fetched? Uh, what is uh, their content signature? Uh, 
which sort of identifies which version of the page we, uh, we last see. And some other metadata, arbitrary metadata that you want to associate with this page. Then we have the link database, which uh, stores connections uh, between uh, pages. And in case of Notch, the link DB actually stores incoming links. Why incoming links? Because uh, incoming links contain uh, a very important uh, piece of data, which is the anchor text. And anchor text is a very, very crucial piece of semantic information that we want to associate with the target pages. So this link DB stores uh, this information in an inverted uh, uh, format, so to speak, uh, because HTML pages contain outlinks and not in, in links, right? Then we have the uh, uh, shards, or segments as they are called, uh, uh, confusingly, in Nudge. Um, and shards store the downloaded content and all the artifacts that uh, come as a result of uh, processing this raw content. So you have uh, plain text that you extracted from, uh, from the pages, you have metadata, uh, you may have uh, outlinks, of course, and uh, you have other stuff that uh, maybe you pulled from other databases or other sources. Okay, when it comes to the workflow, uh, how the, uh, how it, it's, a, it's an explanation a little bit uh, about why the shards. Shards are just a convenient uh, unit of work. It's a batch of processing, because Hadoop uh, in its nature is a batch processing system. Uh, it's not a true online uh, processing system. So Notch also works with batches, and uh, segments or shards are the units of work, batches. So uh, these batches uh, tie together related information for a unit of work. So we have the fetch lists uh, uh, that is uh, created with the generator uh, component. Uh, we have the results of fetching, which is the raw content. Uh, and then we have the parsed uh, data and parsed metadata. And then optionally, we may, we may uh, store also per shard indexes there. Periodically, these uh, batches are phased out as new content uh, comes in, right? Because uh, old pages uh, get obsolete. Uh, as you remember, each page has its own fetch schedule, uh, fetch interval. Every n days or n seconds, we refetch this page to, to check if it, if it was updated or not. So new content comes in in new batches, and old content is, uh, is being phased out. And indexes are uh, updated accordingly. So there is this uh, little tiny problem. Mm. You download uh, your notch, and uh, you have Java right on your machine. And then uh, you need to start somewhere. And uh, you want to, of course, you want to build uh, the best search engine uh, around the block, right? So you want to pick only the most interesting items. The problem is, uh, which items are these? Uh, unfortunately, bad news is that there is no authoritative catalog of web pages, right? So you need, you need to start somewhere. And then, as you start somewhere, you need to find your way around and not uh, without being lost, without getting lost. So the danger is that you start collecting junk or that you start collecting the same things over and over again. So that's the challenge of uh, maintaining a crawling frontier. So the best practice is to start from high quality seed lists. It's a list, usually small list, although in my practice I, um, I, I worked uh, on projects that started with one million uh, URLs as the seed list, although that was, uh, the quality of the seed list was mixed. But usually you start with, uh, with a small seed list, like uh, 10 sites or 100 sites, uh, the ones that you know a priori that they are interesting for you. It could be uh, taken, this list could be taken from Wikipedia or from Freebase or Demos, uh, although nowadays Demos uh, quality deteriorates uh, somewhat. Or it could be obtained from existing verticals. Uh, I know also uh, about the practice of seeding your, uh, your new search engine from existing major search engines. So you type a query that 
Google or Yahoo or whatever or Bing. And uh, then you collect top end results and then take URLs, right? And that's your seed list. Presumably, they know something that you don't know yet. And then uh, a common practice is that uh, the, uh, the next hop, as you expand, uh, going, for, uh, going to the outlinks uh, from your current seed list, then uh, the, common pr the common experience is that uh, the, the quality still uh, remains relatively high. The pages, uh, most of the time, uh, stay on topic, whatever that is. But even at this stage, you, sh you should remove uh, something that is obviously junk or useless content. Like, um, of course, ev everybody needs a, a PDF reader, but not everybody needs to search for pages that, uh, that point to Acrobat site, right? So as you grow uh, your collection of web pages, the problem of controlling which pages you collect and which pages you discard quickly becomes more and more acute. So Nudge has a, a range of um, uh, flexible and uh, robust uh, controls to, uh, to monitor what kind of stuff you are collecting and to quickly discard stuff that is not interesting. So first, you can uh, uh, control this on the level of URL patterns. Surprisingly, uh, many URL patterns are obviously uh, related to something that is junk. Like, if you have a URL pattern that uh, has many segments that are purely numeric, like 1, 2, 3, 4, slash uh, X, Y, Z, uh, well, X, Y, Z is not numeric, but uh, 5, 4, 6, uh, et cetera, et cetera, then uh, most likely you hit a, uh, you hit a, uh, a site with, uh, with dynamically created spam pages. So you can also uh, think about focusing your, your crawling on a certain domain, right? If you want to build a domain specific like, uh, like .de or .uk, .co.uk or whatever, uh, then you, you may want to um, put a, uh, URL, a set of URL filters that limit your crawl, crawling frontier only to that subset of outlinks. And then, of course, your crawler will move into that direction more than in other directions. Then we have no URL normalizer plugins. Uh, and this solves another issue. Like uh, when you crawl, w when you fetch pages, uh, oftentimes uh, you, you are redirected to other sites. Now the question is, is this uh, still the same page redirected, or is it a different page? Like. Uh, if you stayed one second, uh, for one second on this page, and then you were redirected to a completely other server, is it still the same page? Difficult question to answer. There is really no good answer for, uh, for this. Uh, but there are plugins in Nudge that uh, determine what is the canonical URL uh, for a page, and uh, also how to resolve relative paths. Uh, for, uh, for example, um, uh, some buggy web servers, uh, they tend to create uh, multiple segments of uh, uh, double dot slash, double dot slash, double dot slash, double dot slash, et cetera, et cetera, and slash index.html. Of course, this is uh, obvious junk. If you visit this URL, it will just append another segment of double dot slash. Uh, and uh, what it means? It means that your crawl DB will explode because there are so many unique URLs, but you know they are junk. So you need to normalize them. And there are many, many other uh, built-in controls in Notch uh, that allow you to shape this, this expanding cloud of your web knowledge. And there are also different strategies for, uh, for crawling. Uh, the one that is implemented in Notch out of the box is breadth first. So, as you learn about new sites, uh, you uh, follow outlinks in breadth first uh, search. Um, there are some situations uh, where you may want to go deep first, uh, depth first, like uh, if a site requires maintaining cookies or uh, some authentication or whatever. So a little bit more of about these uh, different strategies. Um, very few uh, users, Nudge users, 
actually uh, go for wide, almost uncontrolled uh, crawling. First of all, it requires a lot of resources. Um, so you need a lot of bandwidth, you need a lot of uh, storage, you need a lot of CPU power. And in the end, uh, you have to fight constantly with uh, getting uh, a lot of junk and spam. Uh, my experiments show that if you don't control your crawling frontier, after roughly 10 cycles, you're collecting like 90% of junk. Pretty depressing. <laughs> so white crawling is complicated in the sense that you have to be uh, very strict about uh, what kind of stuff you are collecting and uh, quickly discard any, anything that resembles, even resembles junk. And politeness is a very important limiting factor. You cannot crawl uh, a single server, uh, you know, submitting like 100 requests per second because they will block you. So you have to be polite. You have to wait between requests. But this, in turn, uh, limits your rate of indexing that particular server up to a point where you are not able to index all the content from that server. And at that point, you have to prioritize things. You have to select things that are more important, that you want to crawl first, and something, some things that you will never crawl. On the other hand, if you are into a focused crawling, uh, like uh, you are trying to build a vertical search engine, then you have a limited crawling frontier. M most of the time you know exactly what you want to discard and what you want to, to focus on. And uh, very often bandwidth or politeness is not an issue. If you are crawling your own server that sits in the basement, uh, then who cares? as long as you're not affecting the, uh, the other services that are on the same server. There is a low risk of spamming or junk content. Uh, we assume that uh, if it happens within the organization, uh, within an ent enterprise, then uh, uh, we have very little uh, junk content, uh, at least according to managers. So another, another point of view on, uh, on the strategies uh, uh, for crawling is a vertical search, where you start from a range of uh, selected reference sites, then you, then you, have, um, uh, then you do extensive content post-processing to enrich this data that you have collected, and then at the end of the day, when you, pr when you offer a search service or you, uh, you post-process this data, a lot of this post-processing and ranking decisions are business-driven and not purely TF-IDF uh, uh, relevancy. On the other hand, uh, in case of enterprise search, you will uh, meet with a broad variety of uh, data sources and data formats. So we have to be prepared to, uh, um, is it so? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So in this case, uh, um, you have to focus on, uh, on, um, on the integration with in-house data sources. Uh, I need to speed up. Um, uh, so face to face with Notch, uh, we'll cover this quickly. Um, you know where to download the stuff. Uh, uh, it operates as a single node out of the box, but of course underneath it runs on Hadoop. Uh, so uh, it, uh, you, can, uh, you can submit the job jar uh, to a Hadoop cluster. And there is a file-based configuration, uh, which I don't have time to cover um, uh, here, but there is a, a lot of information about how to configure Notch uh, specifically on the wiki. So the main Notch workflow goes like this. You inject, then you generate new shards fetch list, then you fetch raw content, parse content, update the crawl DB from shards, update the link DB from shards, index sh shards, and then you repeat the, the last uh, a couple of steps until you are satisfied that you collected enough documents. It's really simple, right? So yeah, that's a graphical representation of the same process. We inject to the crawl DB, uh, we generate uh, a new shard, and then we populate the shard with the fetcher, and then we parse the, the, the fetch content. Uh, we invert the links uh, to uh, create the link DB. Uh, then we do some rounds of the scoring, like uh, calculating page rank. And finally, we index. Uh, so uh, when it comes to indexing, um, uh, Notch implements uh, MapReduce indexing. OK. 
Okay, good. So notch uh, uh, implements MapReduce indexing. Uh, there are many models to implement uh, MapReduce indexing, actually. Uh, and uh, notch implements one, uh, one of them, uh, where map uh, simply assembles parts of the documents uh, from the CrawlDB, LinkDB, and shards. And then uh, text analysis is uh, executed on the reduce side, as well as uh, actual creation of, uh, of a Lucene or Solar index. There are other possible uh, MapReduce indexing models. Uh, there are existing implementations for them, and uh, one day, maybe they will be in, uh, integrated with, with Notch. Not yet. So when it comes to integrating Notch as a black box uh, with the rest of your uh, data processing chain, uh, obviously, because Notch started as a search engine, there are tools uh, for integrating it as a search engine. So search is... A, uh, there is a REST style interaction then, uh, with XML or JSON responses. Uh, and there are uh, command line and API tools to integrate Notch uh, as a part of your bigger application. Another level of integration is on the level of data. So you can use Hadoop tools uh, to read uh, uh, Notch data, which is stored as map files, Hadoop map files and sequence files. Of course, this is more complicated. This is a tighter integration that is uh, uh, more brittle. And finally, you can export Notch data in plain text formats. Uh, there are tools to export mostly everything in Notch. So we can export uh, individual records from CrawlDB, from LinkDB, from, uh, from shards. Um, everything can be exported to well-formatted uh, records in plain text. So now we come to the conclusion. Uh, how to do web data mining with Notch. Naturally, uh, it's a search engine toolkit, so uh, you, can, you can use uh, search. Um, currently, Notch is moving to, towards uh, indexing and searching using Solar. Uh, in the near future, uh, as soon as Solar Cloud is integrated with uh, Lucene Trunk, uh, we will uh, integrate uh, also Solar Cloud indexing and searching in Notch. So that's uh, briefly about this. Um, and let's focus on the, uh, on the real stuff here. So you may think that uh, you need a ver very sophisticated tools uh, to do some data mining. But that's not the case, uh, at, least not, uh, at, le at least part of the time. Keyword search is really a crude topic mining. Uh, you have your topic-specific keywords, and you can run a search and get a list of results that are on this topic, right? Phrase search is a cr sort of crude collocation mining. Uh, you check what are the co-occurrences of certain terms. Then anchor search, uh, you search for text in anchors, is a sort of crude semantic enrichment because the anchor text enriches the target document, not the source document. Well, source document as well, but we care about the target document. Then you can uh, build a feedback loop from the search results to, uh, well, you may, you may want to cluster search results to discover some uh, hidden topics, or you may feed the top end results uh, to prioritize your search. Oh, this site uh, is interesting for my next search, right? So I, put, I should focus and do a depth uh, first crawl of that site. An example of system that I helped to build uh, was a question answering system which used uh, just plain search, really. Although it did uh, a lot of sophisticated uh, natural language processing on the way. So it would crawl uh, reference sites, collect documents from reference sites, and then it did uh, NLP analysis, uh, like key phrase detection, uh, part of speech tagging, uh, noun verb, subject predicate detection, uh, etc., etc. And then on the query side, uh, and of course this information was stored in the index. And on the query side, uh, the query would undergo a similar NLP analysis. And then matching these two ex expanded query and expanded uh, document text would provide some results, right? And then these results would be finally evaluated whether they actually provide an answer to a question. So we see here also that the web could be treated as a corpus, as a source of uh, raw data for any other purpose. 
And notch is, uh, could be also the feeding uh, line to feed your other data processing system. So for, exa for example, you may want to collect a large uh, number of documents in a, in a specific language. Um, like um, I was involved in a project that built an Indian search uh, um, engine. So uh, they needed a lot of uh, documents in uh, one of many uh, Indian languages uh, to feed their uh, data mining tools. You could uh, select pages by presence of keywords or using full-blown uh, natural language processing. You can enrich this data by adding stuff from other reference sites, etc., etc. So the Notch setup is really simple. Uh, you start crawling using this workflow, as I shown uh, a moment ago, and then you define strict URL filters, like uh, let's uh, use a language identification component in Notch to filter documents only in German. You could also do a concept mining. Uh, because uh, out of this raw content that you collected, you could uh, extract stuff uh, like human-created associations, like kind of, contains, includes, application of, type of, etc., etc. So co-occurrence of these uh, key, uh, your, if you have a controlled vocabulary that you work with, co-occurrence of these uh, items on, on a page has some meaning too, right? So example of uh, application that, uh, again, I was involved uh, uh, in building this application was a medical search engine. It would crawl reference uh, websites and then add stuff uh, from controlled vocabulary. And then um, we would do a co-occurrence uh, matrix of, uh, of, um, uh, of uh, items from this controlled vocabulary. And it was an, a Hadoop post-processing of a content that was crawled with Notch. Um, as a ballpark figure, we used 10 nodes. Uh, we had uh, 100,000 phrases in this controlled vocabulary. Uh, 20 million pages uh, in the map on the map site where the process created uh, 300 billion uh, phrases. But of course, it was quickly reduced to a more manageable uh, number by using Bloom filters. And it's, uh, in the end, we got a five gigabytes data cube that we could traverse in different dimensions, like by author, by journal, by co-occurrence of authors, etc., etc. Pretty cool stuff. But it started from uh, notch crawling. Web as a directed graph, I think uh, for the lack of time, I will skip uh, the details of this. Uh, um, uh, the only important part of this is that um, one of the tools in Notch inverts the, the web graph. So we have a page without links, but of course we don't know who is pointing to us, uh, who is point pointing to this page. So there is a process in Notch that inverts this and out of out links creates in links. Oh, that's nice. And as I said, the important part of this is that inlinks uh, have associated anchor text, which is a human-created description of the target page. So it points to a topic that occurs on that target page. So in a sense, you could see web as a recommender system. You have links as recommendations. And if you collect uh, a lot of links, a lot of anchors, then you can figure out, okay, this page is probably about this and that based on the anchor text. Of course, you have to fil filter out, click here. Not all pages are created equal, so you should be uh, careful about uh, who uh, you trust, uh, which recommendations you trust. But that's solved with the page rank. Um, this I'm going to skip as well. Uh, it simply describes how to calculate page rank uh, um, and there are also other models for, uh, for link analysis and scoring. Uh, the important part is to know that uh, Notch has uh, built-in tools for link analysis, either online or um, a, a pure page rank uh, a scoring algorithm that, uh, that uh, strongly reminds uh, something that Google created. So, the notch charts, again, uh, are the source of outlinks, and the link DB is the source of inlinks and uh, anchor text. As an example of uh, application of this knowledge of, uh, and link analysis, 
you have the porn and junk detection. Uh, if you can detect uh, that a page is uh, pornographic in content, then you can uh, assign certain score, and then you can transfer the score along the, uh, the, the outlinks so that they affect the, the scoring of the target pages. That's something that uh, notch tools will do. Another example is a vertical crawl, uh, where you need to stay on topic. So pages that you know are on topic will positively affect other pages that are linked from, the, from those uh, source pages. Finally, we can treat web as a source of gossip and opinions. Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, social uh, networks here. Um, I'm just considering general purpose uh, web, like news sites, or blogs, or, um, well, tweets. Uh, that's, uh, that's a social network. But uh, example questions that come to your mind, come to my mind at least, uh, but uh, on if you want to provide, if you can provide good answers to these questions, you could perhaps build a good business around this. Who or what is in the news today? Uh, how often a name is mentioned and in what context uh, today Google yields uh, 44,000 44, hits for my email? What facts about me are publicly available today or yesterday and was there any change? What is the sentiment uh, associated with a name? or a person, or a trademark. Let's say I drive a Ford car. What is the uh, general sentiment about Ford car, uh, cars uh, during the last month, or whatever, right? And again, the notch setup is uh, really simple to, to achieve that. Uh, it's the post-processing that is challenging. So you see it from a few reference sites, then uh, you use uh, the parsing plugins, to uh, detect named entities, uh, to do classification, sentiment analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, the nice thing about Notch uh, and uh, and its batch-oriented uh, uh, workflow is that each batch represents a snapshot, a point in time, so we can track how these uh, sentiments change in time. So basically. My message to you today is that uh, web can be a source of anything as long as, uh, as you can find it. So you can use Notch to uh, start at concrete place and expand your knowledge about the web in a controlled and uh, flexible and scalable manner. And you can quickly remove irrelevant data uh, and you can filter out junk and spam. And you can be creative. I mean, uh, you can combine multiple strategies, uh, as I described, uh, or, or anything else. And you can easily export data from Notch. It's not a black box, it's a white box. So you can easily ex export data from Notch into your other parts of processing pipeline. What is the future of Notch? Uh, currently, we are uh, going, um, uh, we are planning a, a serious redesign. Uh, serious redesign of, of the platform, uh, preparing for Notch 2.0, which will be uh, almost a complete restart of the platform. Um, we want to avoid code duplication. In the meantime, there, there have been, um, uh, there came into existence uh, many successful projects that we don't want to duplicate, like Solar and Tika. We want to share code with some other open source crawler projects. Uh, there is a crawler commons project uh, that we want to uh, the Delegate some of the uh, some of the stuff like URL filtering or URL normalization on or robot robots txt handling and stuff like that. When it comes to indexing and search, we want to focus on Solar and Solar Cloud alone, um, and um, the shard management will be uh, uh, the task of Solar Cloud. When it comes to web graph and page repository. Uh, we are planning a serious redesign on this uh, front. Uh, we want to introduce a, a mapping layer that will allow you to use different storage uh, um, backends. So we want to use, uh, for, for the start, we want to use, we want to use HBase, SQL backends, maybe Cassandra or Berkeley DB or whatever key value store is available. And this way we can benefit from native tools available for each platform like query tools uh, for HBase or 
millions of other query tools for SQL platforms. What's left then? Plenty of uh, challenges uh, uh, for us to work. Uh, but our vision is uh, to provide an um, a la carte toolkit, scalable from a single node to thousands of nodes. And again, it should be easy to set up uh, uh, on a single node, but uh, we want to focus on providing a reli reliable and easy to integrate framework that you can use for web data mining. So that's the, basically the conclusions that Notch implements all uh, components that you need to set up a search engine. It's built on a scalable foundation of Hadoop. Uh, it's extremely configurable and modular, and you can easily imp implement it as a part, as a feeding line to your data main mining platform. Are there any questions? You were mentioning some content analysis uh, tools. How uh, much of a multi-language support do you have when detecting content of pages, uh, prioritizing the, the crawling and so on? Right. Uh, well, as I said, uh, it's based around plugins. So uh, there is a plugin uh, for language uh, identification. Uh, there are plugins that uh, extract uh, metadata from pages, uh, uh, but uh, the bad news is that metadata often lie about uh, what is the page encoding or uh, what is the page language, or, <laughs> well, they lie about many things. Uh, so uh, there, there are strategies uh, to, uh, to reconcile this conflicting information from, uh, from various sources. Uh, so, um, for instance, right now we, um, we extract uh, uh, content encoding from the, uh, from the page metadata but as well, we check it uh, with the uh, uh, content encoding detector from Tika. So um, I don't remember actually who wins uh, at the moment. Uh, you remember, Julia? No. Oh, OK, well. Uh, but yeah, th th basically, th you can do a lot of this stuff with plugins. So I don't know if, I, if that answers your question. Is it switch up? No. Partly, so when you um, want to detect, for example, whether it's a porn page or some other... Sorry, sorry I can't... I can't. When you want to detect what the contents of the page is about, whether it's something you want to prioritize or it's porn, so you want to, want to ignore it, uh, do you do that mostly ba based on content or do you rely more on, on annotated it's metadata? It's up to you, really, uh, because uh, you can work... Uh, there, is a, uh, there is an extension point which is called HTML parse filters uh, in Notch that you can use to implement a plugin that works on a page basis alone. So we can analyze the content of the page and say, OK, I determined uh, with a confidence that uh, this page is about this topic. So I store the topic in the metadata in the, in the crawl DB. Or you could uh, uh, do this as a post-processing step on the crawl, on the crawl DB, on, on the segments, uh, you know, to collect all pages from uh, the same server and say, yeah, this site is about this topic. Or you could uh, do it on the fly if you have some external da databases that you can consult. So it's up to you, really. Uh, the, the important fact is that there is an extension point that you can hook your plugin into. Any other questions? Hi. An increasing number of web pages are becoming AJAX-based today. How does Nudge deal with that, uh, with content that is being laid asynchronously? Um, the short answer is it doesn't. Um, uh, from the Nudge point of view, uh, each access to this page will uh, create a different version of the page. So that's uh, one of the challenges that I mentioned in the last slide, um, which uh, I scrolled down quickly probably, um, uh, which is the pagelet level crawling. Um, and uh, also, it's, uh, it's a matter of how you look at uh, AJAX uh, sites, AJAX-driven sites. Are they applications or are they websites? So the question is whether uh, they are worth crawling at all. If it's an application, you don't, you don't crawl an application. Uh, 
the question was, uh, are there uh, specific use cases um, for Notch at the moment? Well, as I said, uh, it's mostly used as a vertical search engine. Uh, um, few companies uh, advertise that they use Notch. Uh, I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, that's the fact of life. Uh, uh, I was personally involved, uh, for instance, for the last year in, uh, in uh, four or five uh, projects that uh, uh, started using Notch uh, for vertical search. Either, either for vertical search as a, as a service offered outside or inside an enterprise. Um. Many, many things like uh, PageRank and so reminds me to the Google uh, uh, search. And other concepts you're just kind of re-engineering or something. So what is your relation of, uh, of this project to, to Google? Maybe some engineer from Google might help in uh, some, some uh, areas of how to uh, analyze the, the, the spirit or, or the, really, the meaning of the page or something like that. Um, there is no relation whatsoever to Google. Um, the only possible relation uh, would be that uh, uh, there were uh, commercial uh, search engines in year 2003, and Duck Cutting thought it would be a great idea to have an open source toolkit that does the same. So that's the only connection I can see. But of course, uh, many algorithms uh, are inspired, uh, at least partially, uh, like uh, link analysis and, uh, and ranking based on link analysis are partially inspired by the PageRank uh, algorithm from Google, which is itself is uh, patented, but uh, there have been ex an extensive uh, uh, scientific literature on the subject, so it's no longer a pure Google property. <laughs> you need to stop. Okay. Three minutes to the next talk. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>